Hello, it is Direct Mail, Monday, May 20th, 2019. Steve Cypress here. We have part two of my random stuff, random mail that arrived now not so recently. This is a continuation from uh, two weeks ago's Direct Mail Monday video, where due to my incredibly comically poor internet connection, even in my own house, the video just suddenly and abruptly ended. First time that's ever happened. I've been doing this over two years. And then last week I was out of town and so didn't have my stack of direct mail, wasn't in my office. And so let's do the continuation here because I was abruptly cut off in what might have been the middle two weeks ago. So let's finish it up. And I've added a couple of interesting pieces that have, or, or at least uh, noteworthy pieces that have arrived uh, in the past week or so. Jeremy Danley is here and Sid is here. Great seeing you guys. And Jeremy, I got your card. I just went and got the mail for the first time since I got back home. And, uh, was, oh, I put it aside for my beautiful wife, Michelle, because uh, we really appreciate it. And, uh, man, where I put a whole stack of, there it is. Yeah. Really appreciate it, Jared. Dog, my man. And uh, so, all kinds of stuff. Let's get right to it. Um, now, here's the cool part of this. Uh, normally, right before the video, I kind of go through all kinds of mail, and I look at it all real carefully. I sort of select it for a reason, but in this case, I just now picked up the pile from a couple of weeks ago, and as I looked through it, I was like, I don't remember why I put this in the pile, so we're going to have some fun here, a little flying by the seat of the pants, where I will have uh, possibly an initial reaction to some of this stuff, which could be cool and show you what your prospects are uh, initially how they are initially reacting when you send them stuff. Uh, and that uh, goes hand in hand with something I say to Jared Gold all the time, one of the nation's funniest comedians and by far the best marketer of all the comedians in the country. Uh, Jeremy knows and anyone that knows me knows I am just terrible at jokes. I just don't remember jokes. And so I will laugh at the same joke over and over. And here it is. I don't remember some of this mail that I just looked at two weeks ago and felt was so noteworthy that I ought to share it on Direct Mail Monday video. But let's get right to it. So first one is uh, seminar marketing. Now, those of you that use live events, I've used hundreds of live events to make uh, millions and millions of dollars for my clients and myself over the years. I'm a huge fan of them. And uh, so you always want to do marketing to fill your live events. And when you get as with anything, prospects that are likely to respond, it's worth investing some money into and putting something physical into their hands. So this one is from a company, this um, uh, Anderson, Renewal by Anderson, which uh, at least down here, I don't know where you are in the country or actually I have viewers all over the world, um, but Renewal by Anderson in this area, in the Phoenix area, uh, it spends ridiculous amounts of money on advertising. They are all over local TV. Uh, probably all over local radio, though I don't listen to that. They're on billboards all over the place. They're uh, advertising all local newspapers, magazines, all local cable channels, and uh, they are they do a whole bunch of direct mail. So in this case, they're not even beating around the bush, which a lot of times, I, which actually I always highly recommend you do, not really beating around the bush, but not talking about your product or service in your marketing. You want to talk about the benefits the results, the experience that your ideal target who is going to get by attending the seminar. And yet this one, they're just, I guess they got so much money that they can just mail this out to so many millions of people and it backs up all their TV and they do long form TV advertising, by the way, two minute spots, two and a half minute spots all the time with all kinds of great information about, oh, question and answer with a supposed customer on, gee, wh how, why is the you know heat going out of my windows? Or down here, it would be, why is it coming in the windows? Or whatever. And um, so, man, they just get right to it. And they just say, you're invited to a window and door seminar. <laughs> wow. It's a window and door replacement seminar. And they even grab the vanity URL, which is very smart in event marketing, renewalevent.com. So it makes it easy to remember for people. Well, it's the... Uh, well, because the company is called Renewal by Anderson. So it's RenewalEvent.com, and you're invited. And they, if I went there, see, I did not prepare myself properly, but maybe you will, uh, you uh, viewers, and thank you for the likes. 
um, that you could go to renewalevent.com and I wonder if it's going to start with put in your zip code and then it's going to say here are all the upcoming events in your area choose the one you want to attend because they're going to use that for all of their events which likely they're hosting thousands all over the country in fact right on this card here they detail two of them and you can see it is a couple of weeks old this was in the pile for a couple of weeks uh, May Tuesday the 14th for dinner and Sunday which I assume that says new uh, 12, well, 11, maybe it said 10, 11 a.m. to 1. Ah, you know, sometimes when you're mailing postcards, I guess there's an added bonus lesson here. When you're mailing postcards, sometimes the postman or it, something, will just get. if it's raining, it appears here that maybe it got wet and then it sort of attached itself to whatever was underneath. And when I pull it off, ironic amazingly i mean it could have been over here and i would have known it still said window it could have been over here it's all blank space it doesn't do anything for anybody but in this case it would have been a nice buffer against the old hey smudge or or whatever something is ripped off of it and yet it's right there on the time so i was going to say i don't know what time that says i thought it would say noon to one but it's an a.m so then I was like, well, how long is it? Let's see how long this one is. Oh, I don't know how long that one is. So I don't know. Maybe that's 7 to 8.30. Maybe that's 11. I don't know. Would that be a longer? Any, who cares? Anyway, two events. They got a dinner on a weekday and a lunch or a brunch or breakfast or something on a Sunday. So that's what you want to do when you do two seminars. You don't want to just say Tuesday night or Wednesday night. Someone's going to go, I could never make it at night. I work nights. Or kids come home from school. I got to feed the kids. Can't get out at night. I wish you had a lunch one. So you want to have a lunch one and a dinner one. You want to have a weekday and a weekend. So two uh, choices, and they're both very close to each other. This painted golf resort, I know where that is, and this Nando's is a chain. Now, a lot of times you'll see that I will, I will, will laugh together on here on Direct Mail Monday at the seminars when they're being hosted at the Golden Corral or the uh, something equally ridiculous, uh, a McDonald's or something, a Panera Bread, you know, really ridiculous places, those seminars. Uh, but this Nando's Mexican Cafe, even though it's a Mexican restaurant, and here in the Phoenix area, if you've ever been here, there's one about every 10 feet. But Nando's is a real popular one. I've been there. And when I looked at the menu, it looked so well done. I asked the person who invited me there, I think it was a client of mine, and I said, uh, man, is this a chain? They were like, oh, yeah, they're all over the place. So, yeah, because I could see systematized and I could see really well done menu and really well done marketing. Yes, it kind of sucks to, to, to even do any kind of hobby or do anything in your free time or go just go out to a meal with me because I, I just do not turn off the marketing brain. Uh, my beautiful wife, Michelle, would tell you, I look at the menu and I'm like, oh, honey, man, look, they should have put this over here. Look what they did here. And look what they, you know, I've consulted to every conceivable type of business for decades and I've helped them all transform their business, make a ton of money. And uh, that includes window menus. And uh, I mean, uh, I'm reading the word window. It includes restaurant menus, includes window and door guys, includes every kind of company there is. So my stuff uh, uh, that I'm teaching here and direct my money, it's a very basic stuff. And it's, uh, I like to keep it so that it's uh, transferable to all industries. But if you really get with me, go to helpfromsteve.com. I will share some some uh, secrets and some strategies that'll work spectacularly in your particular industry. Uh, anyway, so uh, they're doing a lot of good things here. Seating is limited, must be, uh, you know, VI, RSVP. But even if you don't, this is interesting. Another interesting thing here. Even if you, this is just the first piece, let's move on already. But this is interesting. Even if you don't RSVP, check it out. Just cut this off and bring it to the seminar. Just tell me your name and email and phone number. Like, so I'm guessing that even if I didn't RSVP, even though, the of course, I'm guessing, by definition, seating is limited. How many people does the Painted Mountain Golf Resort seat, even in the largest banking room, banquet room, even if it was a thousand? It's limited just by the nature of anything in a restaurant. Of course, it's limited. Uh, but they say that to create some scarcity, right, which will then create some urgency. They don't say it, but I'm thinking... I better reply now because of the scarcity, right? There's, there's only a certain number of seats I better reply, but I'm guessing if I don't, man, I'll bet they just let me walk right in. Why not? Because first of all, this is really bold. 
they're ident I'm, I'm self-identifying just by walking in that I am interested in possibly purchasing windows and or doors to replace in my home that I own. I'm identifying myself as all that because it doesn't say learn how to save money on your bill, on your heat, uh, cooling down here, it would be air conditioning bill. Although 10 day forecast, we are around 80 degrees every day for 10 days at the end of May. Extraordinarily perfect, unbelievable weather. Even have a nice breeze, it even rained a little bit today. It's like, wow, are we in some normal city? Well, I thought I was in the Phoenix area. But anyway, and then they're telling you, look at that. They're violating every rule at all. Our windows, me, 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 I, 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 all about us. Like, but when you got tons of money and you got a humongous market and a humongous budget and you're just marketing to every homeowner and you don't care how much money you spend, you can do all those mistakes and you can still fill your seminar. Now, most small business owners don't have that luxury. We've got to make our dollars count. So we want to purchase a small list or market to a small, really targeted who. And then we want to heap on all the, we want to follow all the good rules of marketing. We want to talk about them. All the, all the benefits they'll get and experience they'll have and how great the food is and how, how, who, you know, what the speaker's going to teach, what you'll learn from them, all the kind of good stuff. They can violate that because they have all the power of humongous amounts of dollars to spend, which likely tells you that they're also making a lot of money, which is fantastic. So that's likely why they continue to have lots of money to spend, right? Because their stuff is working. They're selling a ton of windows and doors. Now, I could help them uh, really improve their ROI there, um, but I'm sure they're doing fantastic. This one I included just because I thought it was interesting. I, I, you know, my I consider myself kind of an aficionado of direct mail, and yet I've never seen this before. This is the pseudo big envelope. Look at that. <laughs> that's not that's not real envelope. I was I even went to open it. Doesn't oh, that's just printed on there. It's just a self mailer. It's folded up. It's tabbed. On the top here, tab of these, this, oh, here it's a few pieces of glue here that glue down the piece. So it's just a, it's a self mailer, which means you fold up something and you don't need an envelope. But it, oops, but it looks like an envelope. How funny is that? Just thought that was cool. That was something uh, addressed to my mom who passed away three and a half years ago. Uh, but I had all the mail, mail forwarded to me as the administrator of her account, and I'm, she's still on mailing list. And this is all about, as I just saw, I was wondering what it was. It's all about, ah, check it out. It's another event. This is uh, about hearing aids. It's a hearing health event with a free hearing test. See, now they're, they're following the rules we talked about. Here's the benefit of coming. You get a free test and a free otoscope inspection with an asterisk, which if it was smart, they would have the asterisk explaining what's an otoscope, how much it normally costs to get an otoscope inspection. I have a feeling that since this is a big company marketing, this is uh, an asterisk leading to a weasel clause that you don't actually get a free heating test and autoscope inspection if blah, 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 or unless something. So let's check out uh, if I'm right or wrong. Oh my goodness. See, I don't need a hearing aid, but I need seeing aids. And I just put them on my head. So where does the asterisk go to? You're kidding me, it really does. It goes to all this stuff on the bottom. Ouch. Uh, our hearing test and video otoscopic inspection are always free. Hearing test is an audiometric test to determine proper amplification needs only. Not written by a marketer, is it? These are not medical exams or diagnoses, nor are they intended for So it's weasel clause. It's, it's, it's a legalese mumbledy jumble about how, you know, this test might not determine whether you blah, 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 who knows, whatever. And, and I'm sure there's a lot of good stuff on there, but let's move along. Uh, I just like some of the stuff on the outside of here, even though it's basically this is done really poorly. You got nothing on the back of the envelope. You have a indicia, which tells you right away this is junk mail. We don't really care that much about you. You got a, uh, uh, a you know, a, a window envelope. This is clearly solicitation. We're selling you something. It's junk mail. It's as flat as a pancake. It's like probably not even a folded eight and a half. By 11, you'll say I haven't opened it yet, but I, it's not even a folded eight and a half by 11. It doesn't seem thick enough. It seems like one piece of paper, one third the size of an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. But it does say receive your free Social Security and Medicare informational brochure. So you can see 
the old free brochure, free report, that's their irresistible offer. Receive a free brochure about your government death, oh, I just noticed that. I thought it said government health benefit. It's important information about your government death benefit. Now, is that ironic or what? It's, it's, it's addressed to my mom. My mom is not going to receive a government death benefit because my mom is dead. How ridiculous is that? Scrape your list, people. Uh, but okay, do not discard. And to, to someone, you know, my mom was 83 years old, so now she would be 87. So if they're marketing to someone of that age, uh, then they might be very interested in their government death benefit or their spouse might be interested and they might want to get their free Social Security and Medicaid brochure. And now I'm just going to check out to see if I was correct. I was correct. This is not even a full eight and a half piece of paper. It's one third of an eight and a half piece. That's how flat and 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 lifeless this mailing is it's just simply a reply card to put on your information and at least they did this smart there's no post is necessary so i just dropped this right in the mail with my information now by the way i gotta let you know how stupid this is don't do this okay this is not done well this has already the name i'm, I'm crossing out because the name and address printed on there but look at this you're asking for the person to put their date of birth, their phone number, their spouse's age, this, all this per very personal information. And then it doesn't even go in an envelope. It just goes into the mail. I don't know about you, but a lot of people, now I know the younger, youngest, you know, whatever generation, X, Y, Z, A, B, C, whatever they are, they have no expectation of privacy whatsoever. They'd be watching me right now and be going, if anyone's out there, they're all laughing. Oh, Tim is here. Jim is here. Steve Mel is here. Great seeing you. Thank you. Cool shirt. Yeah. I wear a, a different ugly red Hawaiian shirt every single day because every day feels like on vacation down here in paradise. But, um, you know, the youngest generation, those folks don't believe there's even such a thing as privacy. You know, everyone's got a phone and a video and cameras are everywhere and uh, Amazon, what Siri is recording everything you say and blah, blah, blah. And they're all fine with it. Oh, yeah, sure. They're all fine with that. Like, but people of my generation, people getting this, people who are of this age looking for their death benefit and their social security and whatever, we actually give a rip about our privacy and we don't feel like putting our date of birth and our cell phone and our spouse's date of birth what, on, on a, and then just throwing it out in the mail. Like, Oh my goodness, mistake. Include a number nine envelope with that, by the way. Number nine, you, everyone, I think, you ought to know, a number 10 envelope is a standard size envelope. Number nine is the one size below that fits inside. It's a standard reply envelope. It's inside the number 10 for the reply. So, anyway. Next, don't know why I kept this, but, uh, oh, I got a couple of things here from Ace. So, we got a local Ace hardware store, which I guess, uh, I don't know if we, I know we've gone in and bought stuff, uh, but I don't know if that's how we got in the mailing list or they're just mail. No, nope, they're just mailing it out to everybody. This is just to, uh, or current resident. It's just pre-sorted standard junk mail postage thing. But I, what did I like about it? I don't know. Let's see. Oh, well, I love the word free. That is the most powerful word in powerful word in all of advertising and marketing. So exclusively for ACE rewards members which we are not that I know of. I don't know, my beautiful wife, Michelle, you know, if you opened up her purse, you'd see 400 rewards cards and loyalty cards, you know, every supermarket and every everything. And I go in, you know, she's out of town right now up with her family in, in Wisconsin, and I go into the supermarket or something they're like, oh, do you have a card or whatever? I'm like, I'm sure my wife does. Oh, what's the phone number? I give it up. Oh, yeah, I'm sure she does. She has a card to everything. So maybe we do have an ace reward something. And but look at these. That's what I like. Also, look at that. Free, 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 free. So we got free on the front, and then we got buy this and get that free. Buy this and get that free. Buy this and get that free. And these are all related items. So if you buy a grill, you might want. Oh, and check it out. It's the Rhino. Love it. It's the Rhino gas, which I when we needed gas, our now our current gas grill is attached on a gas line into the gas when we don't need to uh, uh, ever fill the tanks. But 
you know, my beautiful wife, Michelle, would tell you, and she would laugh, how many different CVS or Walgreens or whatever I had to drive around to to find a blue rhino. Not buying any other brand of gas. Got to be the rhino, of course. But anyway, I digress. Uh, but you see, so if you buy the gas grill, you get the free gas. If you buy the charcoal grill, you get the free charcoal. And uh, this smoker, you get the free smoker chips or whatever. So very cool. I like that. Relevant offers. Who wouldn't, if you're buying one of those grills, who wouldn't want the free stuff you need to actually cook stuff in the grill? And then Ace sent us something also, another thing, which is another self-mailer again. It's a self-mailer, so it's tabbed. There it is. Glued in a little bit there. Oh, and see this? This is smart. This is a little more lumpy than flat. They've got actual tear-off cards here. So I can feel like a member or I feel like I got some valuable something. Look at this. Uh, from now till the end of the month, I get $7 off a purchase of 35 or more. So at best, I get a 20% discount. And if I buy something for 100 bucks, I only get a 7% discount. And then we have tons of weasel claws on the back. And there's the glue that I just tore this off. Ooh, it glues it onto the thing. So, you know, this is interactive. Um, uh, it's an involvement device. It's known as technically in the direct mail industry. You get people involved with the mailing. Like I did when I was a kid, the first thing I remember was the old Columbia Record and Tape Club. Remember that? Or no, it was the Publishers Clearinghouse. You know, they, 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 it, was a, it was a sheets of magazine covers. And back then, I'm licking my lips because it's Pavlov's dog. Back then, we had to lick the back of it. And you, you lick the stamps and you put them on. Same with the Columbia Record Tape. You, you picked out the ones you want. That's an involvement device. The more time you can get with people, the more involvement you get with people with your direct mail, of course, the more likely they are to read it, look at it, and then the more likely they respond. And the less involvement you get, the less likely they are to read it, the whole thing, or to respond. Right after I stuck all those labels of the Publishers Clearinghouse magazines onto the thing, and now it said, now put a stamp on it and mail it in. Or you had to glue a quarter to it and mail it in, or Columbia record tape well, it was a penny. Or whatever. I was, was I not going to do that? I just spent an hour looking through it all to find the ones I wanted. And since I only got to pick, you know, eleven, I was like, "Ooh, I got fifteen. Which four do I not want?" But after all that time, somebody's now going to respond. Otherwise, what did I do? Just waste an hour. So you want people involved with your stuff. So there's a good involvement device by Ace. Oh, here's uh, our favorite. AARP, Relentless Insurance Company Marketing, under the guise of, hey, we're just an association for retired persons, for seniors, which is for people over 50. Come on now. I mean, you know, even though I'm clearly over 50, um, uh, 50 is like the new 30. Like it's not, it's not old when you're 50. I don't think anyone thinks, well, I shouldn't say anyone. I was just talking about the youngest generation. They think someone who's 30 is old. They think this AOC character is, is old. Like uh, everyone else goes, holy moly, are you young and uh, unwise in the ways of the world and you have a lot to learn, Kimasabi. But uh, for people of our age, um, this is the uh, association for uh, older people, for seniors. And so uh, we renewed our membership and then uh, we got this notice finally that says, hey, check it out enclosed notification about your membership. So when somebody renews their membership with you, you still want to correspond with them in the same way that you corresponded for them to renew their membership, right? So, and seniors, by the way, if you're marketing to us, we like direct mail. So let's see what we got here. It's going to tell me all kinds of benefits I get with my membership, which means I get to get pitched insurance all the time. That's the benefit. So I get a magazine, I get discounts on hotels, motels. You know, I never ask. I never ask. I really should ask. Like, do you give an A? You know, I mean, not. I don't get it. If I got embarrassed, it would be embarrassing to ask. Uh, but I don't. I'm results oriented for people that know me. So if they're going to give me a discount, I'm going to go, hey, do you have a discount? But I always forget to ask. But you get the ARP bulletin with articles and important issues that affect you and ARP the magazine providing you with fascinating articles and useful information. So you get the magazine and the bullet. So for those of you out here, out there that are not mailing a monthly newsletter, they're mailing two of them. 
Okay, take the hint. Maybe they're making up for the one you're not mailing or you're emailing. Eh, doesn't work. Not the crap and mail something out to people. Show them you care. Anyway, oh, you get the opportunity. There it is. The opportunity to apply for AARP endorsed auto homeowners and life insurance. <laughs> in other words, we're going to pitch you insurance nonstop. Oh, and there it is. They got the reply envelope. Because I guess they wanted to reply. Oh, oh, yeah. See, this is what I mean. They're asking me to reinstate my membership. And this arrived like a month after we reinstated our membership. So this is not a stick fact, which is what we call after somebody purchases to stop buyers' remorse and returns and complaints and whatever. This is not that. It's not, re it's not, um, uh, letting us know what we got and making us feel good about it. It's still pitching our membership that we, uh, I've already gotten my gift. I showed you the gift that I got weeks ago. And, uh, and then ARP is still nonstop pitching the insurance. This one is the life insurance program. So, you know, we're going to get nonstop pitched insurance and, uh, we got nonstop pitched for renewal of membership. And, uh, they're still pitching us renewal of membership and we're renewed. All right. Next. What do we got here? Who knows what we got? here? Oh, I was going to say, who knows what we got? Just says non transferable card enclosed to my beautiful wife, Michelle. No return address, but on the back, ah, AARP auto insurance program. So now we can, we have the opportunity. And I just felt something that I'll show you. It's what I was just talking about. An involvement device. We've got a card in here, right? So they enclose a little membership card or this is your savings card or something. Does that mean anything? If somebody called you, if you mailed out cards like this in your mail and somebody called and said, I don't have the card, would you say, oh, well, then you can't give me money. Like this is, this, they don't need this. And look how funny it is. This is supposed to tear off a little easier than it's tearing off. But okay, I got it. This is your pre-approved status. Lower. Wow, some strong glue. Lower car insurance rates. Lower than what? I love it. Experienced driver. Nice way of saying AARP, you're experienced. <laughs> call this number and call and see how much you could save. Okay, great. So there's an involvement device, and then there's the whole pitch and how much you can save. And so there you go. See, involvement. I, I feel something in there. I didn't feel like throwing it out. What's in there? Okay, next, let's move on to another one of our favorites, the Cox Communications, the hosts of my incredibly horrible and unreliable, and I do not recommend this company to anyone on earth. That's the company I do not recommend. Worst internet ever, and I talk to all the neighbors here, and they all say the same thing, anyone lives anywhere near me. Oh yeah, that's the only one. There are no other choices other than one of these satellite things, and they're even worse, like Cox sucks. That's just the way it is. In fact, I wouldn't be surprised if there's a website, coxsucks.com, and people just tell their stories about it. And so this is the same one we get all the time. Here's the deal you've just got to see. And I'm like, you're not even recognizing that I am a client. I'm a, I'm a member. I'm a subscriber. I'm a, I'm a client. I'm a customer of yours. I pay you money every month. You take it out. I think it just came out of our bank. A hundred something bucks came out on the, like a day ago or something. I was like, boom. Uh, but then, now, suddenly, they recognize I'm a customer. Steve, you deserve an upgrade. First thing I've ever gotten from this horrible company that of direct mail, which I get probably a piece a month, right? First one I've ever gotten that acknowledges, hey, we actually give a crap about you. We know you're a customer. At least I believe, in this, unless this is just, I'm gonna open so you can see I haven't opened it. So let's see, I believe this is going to acknowledge what a good customer I am, and therefore, oh, and there's an involvement device again. We've got the old card on there. You see, these so popular, these cards. Like, they don't mean anything, does it? This offer is all yours. Contour TV. Don't know what it means. Some kind of cable TV from the, yeah, like I would get buy, I would buy something else from them anyway. I mean, I opened this up to see what it was, and now I'm realizing. I'm not buying anything else from you, Cox Communications. I have to get my internet from you, pretty much. Uh, and, uh, and, but you suck. Uh, but anyway, does it, is this card necessary? I mean, without the card, which was in this space right here, does, couldn't they just, doesn't it still say everything about what it is? And I'm just folding over my home address here for privacy purposes. 
Um, but it says it right there, $44.99 for whatever. Like, but the card is an involvement device, and it's also a lumpy, makes it lumpy man. It's got some, there's something in there. We're human beings. We're all interested to find out what is that that's in there. Okay, so include that. Costs you an extra few pennies, but it boosts your results tremendously. So if you're if you're the type of business owner who is going to sooner or later join the 90% of business owners who go out of business because you have a habit of tripping over dollars to pick up pennies, and you say increase response, lots of extra money, but that will cost me a few extra pennies, Steve. Well. Go, go trip over those dollars and make sure you pick up those pennies, though, and, uh, and don't include involvement devices. Okay, next, PayPal. Steve Cypress or the owner of my business. That's me. I am the owner. So let's see what PayPal is sending me. Now, I've been with PayPal for since they first started. I'm one of their first ever members. Uh, it's, I don't know. It's over 15 years. And again, look how popular you see. Who knew? This has, again... An involvement device of a card, a meaningless card. You know, I'm sure everything it says on this card, it says on this sheet of paper, but it's an involvement device. I could feel the envelope. There's something in there. I wonder what it is. All it is is, oh, look at that. It's a business loan for my company. I can apply for 5000 to 500000 and I get my funding code. Now, is that unique? I don't know. Is it the same one they print on every card? I don't know. But it makes it's it's supposed to make the person feel, the recipient feel that they actually have personally been approved, or personally been sent this, or personally. Well, meanwhile, give the whole thing away when they say apply for. It's like uh, you know, I used to get those like, pre-approved something where I go, oh, pre-approved. Like, no, you're not. You still got to apply from from scratch. So, if for some reason I wanted to, uh, and and the reason is because banks are just not lending. And they're still not, unfortunately. I mean, thanks to the uh, Bush uh, screwing up the economy and then Obama never fixing it for eight years, um, the uh, banks just clammed up and stopped lending and they have not opened up again. So alternative sources of lending have cropped up all over the place and PayPal is one of them. You need half a million bucks, apply for a loan. Okay, boom. Next. up, oh, and that, that looks like that's it because the last... Uh, let's do one more and then we'll do the last one. This is from Geico. And talk about a window envelope. We, we've looked at a couple of window envelopes, right? Now that's a window envelope, my friend. The entire darn thing is a window. Come on now. There's, there's almost no envelope there. It's all window. Which, by the way, uh, I've mailed plenty of stuff in, in completely clear wrappers. So actually, it's a complete window and, and it would show you even what's on the back. Uh, but okay, you could be a, oh yeah, I see this one. This one came around the time of March Madness or, or early April when the finals were coming and, uh, they were feeding off the old March Madness brackets thing. Uh, so, uh, that's, I'm sure that's why I picked this. That you want to, uh, if, if you're topical with your direct mail, your ent, Robert Collier coined the phrase about a hundred years ago, enter the conversation already going on in your prospect's mind. So, you know, not me, but a lot of people in America watch these college basketball games and brackets were on their mind all over the place. And so this mailing came with brackets and check it out. Look who was in the bracket. Me, 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 me. That's how you do it. Okay. You, you put your, you, this is called variable printing. You don't just have to print. If the, if the computer can print the name over here, it can print it again over here. So variable printing means this box, the text in there is changing depending on who it's mailed to. And so uh, I just thought that was kind of cool. Not cool enough for me to open it, of course. Uh, if I want to get pitched auto insurance, I got AARP, right? I don't need Geico also. Anyway, uh, and we'll finish it up with five pieces that I show all the time and they keep doing this. Now, normally, Oh, no, we got one more and then I got four pieces. So check this. Oh, see, I, I should put this on the top. Maybe I did originally. This is another one from Manuel by Anderson. This is the pseudo fake door hanger. I should use the popular term coined by our, our marketing genius president, um, the uh, fake, right? He's all about fake news. Like you get something wrong, suddenly you're fake or just because you don't like him. 
and you publish negative stuff, you're fake. Well, this is the fake, this is actually a fake door hanger. And it says here, oh, I love it, remove to hang on door. As if that's like um, a instruction to the minimum wage or you know high school kid after school who's gonna go hang 300 door hangers on doors in the neighborhood. I used to actually have uh, the disabled do it. I would uh, hire, uh, go to a local, um, uh, it wasn't really a shelter association for like, you know, people with disabilities. It just means uh, learning disability, but they could walk and, and all that stuff. And I was like, hey, they can do these door hangers. Let's give them some money. People like money and that uh, people like uh, the dignity of work. And so I go out of my way to find work that they could do, that they could be pleased. Here's 300 door hangers. And an hour later, you come back home and you got no door hangers because you actually did the work, you get paid. So that's who I would hire. That's who does door hangers. So I guess there's the instruction, remove this to hang on the door. Like people don't know that. And you know why that's on there? Because it's not a door, it's fake door hanger. How do you know? Came in the mail. So they're mailing this out to the current resident. Postage paid, renewal by Anderson. And then all the gobbledygook weasel clause language on the bottom. And, uh, but it, it's supposed to look, this is a printed in a handwriting font because it's supposed to look like Robert hand wrote it on here while he was just across the street putting windows into your neighbor's house. We've been working in the area. If you call and mention my name, we could give you an extra $30 off per window. Thanks, Robert. And here it says, he even did the math there. He took out his pen. No, he did not. This is all printed. I'm just saying it's supposed to show that like Robert supposedly took out a pen. Now, by the way, where this comes from is this is actually a cool thing for all contractors to do, anyone that serves people in the home. So you do uh, windows and doors, heating and air, landscaping, painting, patios, drywall, roofing, siding, anything you do in a home. It's a smart strategy. Uh, I always help my clients do it, to do the old have your guy. You gotta give them incentive because these are not salespeople, they're, they're workers. But giving them incentive to wherever they go, to go two houses down, cross the street, five houses across, cross the street, and two houses across and back to the house so that they fly or nine homes for the one that they worked on and they drop the flyer in the door or the door hanger on the door. And that's where this comes from that supposedly Robert was working in the area and before he goes back, his boss says, you gotta put out nine door hangers for the one home you were in. Because it's when you say, you know, and here you say I was working in the area, but the way it's really done, and if you do this with your, with your workers, if you're a contractor, it's a really smart thing to do. You say, we've been working at the Jones house across the street, or the Jones house. You wouldn't say across the street because some it's gonna be on, four houses on one side of the street, five across the street, but you say we work on the Joan house. And it's likely or possible nowadays, I mean, people are so private, but that the people in that little area know the Jones family. And they possibly looked out the window and saw your truck out there for a day or two. And so they might ask next time they see the Jones family, Mr. Jones walking the dog, hey, how were those renewal by Anderson guys? Were they really like they are in the commercial and really nice and really helpful and good price or who knows? So. Um, and then their irresistible offer is a free window and door diagnosis. Weak, incredibly weak offer. But again, all the money they put into it and all the massive money they put out for marketing, they can, they can afford to get a less than desirable response rate. And they still make a ton of money because they got a ton of money to spend on their marketing. And they have another vanity URL right there, windowreplacementneeds.com, which I'm also thinking is a national thing. Could be wrong. Uh, anyway, the last four, we're gonna finish up. I show these a lot, so we'll just go over real quick. This is the horrible uh, stock letter from the, uh, I think it's State Farm. Yeah, I'm pretty sure. Uh, I've seen enough of them. It's from the old State Farm agent, where when you uh, get your license and you get hired and you say, oh, come work for State Farm, they say one of the benefits is we have a marketing campaign for it. And all you do is contribute X amount and we put the letters, put your name on it and we mail them all out. The thing is these letters suck. So if you work as a sales rep for a company or even 
sort of a, you know, independent sales rep like this for a company or a multi-level marketer or any of that kind of stuff, you can almost guarantee that the stuff your company does for you absolutely sucks. And even if it, even if it works at all, it could work 50 times better. And I make all that stuff work 50 times better. I always have. And so this is a horrible, horrible piece of mail. The outside is horribly done. The inside is equally horrible. We'll open it up, but all four of these are going to be the same horrible letter. And by the way, at the top of the letter, you've seen these before, if you paid attention, is the top of the letter. Do you think it's a headline? Do you think it's some reason to read the letter? Some reason to respond to us? And the back is all blank, horrible. Uh, but no, the top is going to say, State Farm Insurance, boom! Because who are they promoting? themselves state farm is promoting state farm long after this doesn't work and you quit and they hire somebody else at least they got a few bucks out of you to help market themselves not marketing you mr uh tall toy tall or toy or i don't know what is that name never seen it before is that tall tall gray hey tall tolliver maybe his name is tolliver hey tall there's the letter blah 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 wow that's interesting Let's see what this one is. And these all came within the last, ah, oh, it's been difficult to open, crying out loud. I'm pretty good at opening envelopes. I open a lot of them right here on Direct Mail Monday. This one is the same letter, and they're promoting who? State Farm! This one is from Matt Watson. The same letter, but this one's from Matt Watson. Okay, so we have same letter. Looks the same, is the same, everything the same, different name on it. They both work horribly. And now let's look at another one. And usually, I think I started to say that usually when you have repeat mailings, it means the mailing is working. Certainly in your case, I hope you follow the rule that if you mail out a mailing and it doesn't work, change it. Mail something different. Do something different. But if it works, you mail it over and over again. You have an asset in your business. I know every time I mail this letter out, I get X number of calls and X number of clients. I make X number of money. You're like, you have a system that prints money. Oh, it's Paul again. Paul is sending me the same exact letter, not some even something on top that says, hey, I notice you haven't called even though our incredible letter, uh, so I'm sending it again. Nope, just the same letter, not acknowledging anything. And then we got another one, and this is from... You guessed it. Tall Graves. Oh, man. They, Tall said, here, I'll give you the co-op funds. Here's my 150 bucks or whatever. Do the mailing. And it got no responses. And he said, what the heck? No responses. They said, you know, sometimes you got to mail these two or three times. Give us another 150 bucks, Tall. And Tall gave another 150 bucks. Still crickets. No phone calls. He's cold calling everyone. He's already exhausted his friends and family, and they all hate him. And, uh, He's like, all right, I don't know what else to do. He's gone to networking meetings. He sees the same old people, and none of them have any money, and none of their, that's why they were at networking meetings and all that kind of stuff. Okay, I, here's another 100 figures. Let's do it again. Same letter again. Same response again. Everyone does what I just did and tosses it right out. It's a horribly written letter. Maybe someday we'll, we'll do a whole direct mail Monday uh, just on the copy of that letter, which is horribly done. And I've taken, heck, I've had a whole bunch of insurance agent clients that have open up second and third locations and hired five more people and made all kinds of money and never have to call or see a client ever again. They just rake in the cash uh, because of the marketing. And actually, it's helped because of the crappy marketing of competitors. So that's the good news. Your competitors are likely doing all kinds of crap like the stuff I'm showing you. You, especially if you get help from me, go to helpfromsteve.com and help you out. Uh, can do it right, and the money is there for the taking. People are buying insurance. Anyone who owns a car by law, for those that follow the law, they have to buy insurance. People that have homes get insurance. People that have businesses get insurance. People get life insurance. People get health insurance. I mean, it's just what people do. There are tons of money spent. The insurance agency is a trillion dollar industry. So there's plenty of money out there. If you're not getting a response to your advertising and marketing, not because nobody's buying this stuff, right? Take a look in the mirror. All right. Oh, I should have looked at all these. Look at all these people that are here. And Jeremy says, see that? I've been to cocksucks.com. It has nothing to, oh, has nothing to do with, see now, this is what happens 
when I have a client who's one of the funniest professional comedians in the history of the world. He just got me with that one. So congratulations. You got me to actually read that on. <laughs> It's a good point. I actually said on here, I'll bet there's a website called cocksucks.com. <laughs> well, oh, I wasn't even thinking what I said. But of course, professional comedian goes, holy crap, did he walk into this one? That almost types itself out. I've been to cocksucks.com. It has nothing to do with cable or internet. I still didn't get it until he put in the PS, don't tell Karen. That's his beautiful wife, Karen Daly. And so don't tell Karen. <laughs> now I get it. I'm like, don't tell Karen. You went to what? Oh, and then I see it in writing, cocksucks.com. Okay. All right. So a little levity there. <laughs> Maybe there is not a site called <laughs> Maybe there is. Oh, cocksucks.com. All right. We're having too much fun. And then Jeremy did. <laughs> You're killing me. Uh, Jer Dog is his professional name. The comedian Jer Dog says that web page. <laughs> All right, folks. It says that web page is an involvement site. <laughs> You're killing me. Oh, I walked right into that one. Oh, holy tremoly. Okay. Anyway, that'll do it. Jer Dog, as you can see. I'm the ideal, you would love an audience full of me. That's all I have to say. I laugh at everything, especially when it's about me, because come on now, anything about me, including my looks, just has to be hilarious, including I had a comment here about my hilariously ugly red Hawaiian shirt. Now I got people making fun of the stupid website. I said, I don't know. People probably tune into these videos and they don't give a crap. Not even business owners. Like, yeah, I don't give a crap about the marketing stuff. I just want to laugh at Steve. And it's all good. As long as they keep watching, I guess. Facebook likes, comments, shares, likes. Because, by the way, you know what that's called? Involvement. What do you know? Facebook likes involvement and rewards people to get involvement on their videos. So please, whenever you come on, click all the likes, put in the comments, laugh at me. Laugh with me. Do anything you want. Uh, just get that involvement up so the Facebook decides in their infinite wisdom to show my videos to more people. And then more people can have more fun and make more money and have less stress in their life. Because to me, that's the American dream. That's why you run a business. That's why you don't work for us that run businesses. What the heck you want to do that for? Make somebody else's dreams come true. Have them have more fun and make more money and have less stress. The heck with that. Start your own business. Let's go. Start participating in what America is all about. It was only about 150 years ago that, you know, less than 98% of Americans were self-employed anyway. It's called the Industrial Revolution. It's really meant the end of legal slavery and the start of voluntary slavery. Hey, we can't make you work for us anymore, but you will now volunteer to work for us in a factory and make us rich and not be self-employed? Amazing. And now 92% of Americans have bought into it, and only 8% of Americans get it, understand what America's all about, and we're business owners. Now, if you're one of those 8% and you understand and you started a business, shouldn't you be making a lot of money? Shouldn't you be enjoying your life and taking great vacations and buying lots of great stuff? So go to helpfromsteve.com. Let's have some fun, and let me help you make some money. You deserve it. You're running a business. Okay. That's it. Thanks for the likes. Thanks, everyone, being here today. That'll do it for Direct Mail Monday. I'm cracking up again just thinking about how Jer Dog is laughing at me. And uh, I'll be back tomorrow on Topical Tuesday where I will take something topical and teach a business lesson based on it. Thanks, everyone, being here today. Over and out. I will catch you tomorrow. Bye-bye.